Have you ever wondered why we use the term Sub-Saharan Africa? What implications does it carry? We hear this term frequently in global discourse referring to a vast region of the African continent. But have you ever stopped to think about what lies beneath this geographical label? Does it carry more than just a reference to location? Could there be undertones that link it to racial stereotypes or historical bias? Let's peel back the layers and understand the term Sub-Saharan Africa and its implications. The term Sub-Saharan Africa didn't emerge out of a vacuum, it has a historical context that needs unpacking. Let's take a trip back to the colonial era where the roots of this term lie. The phrase Sub-Saharan Africa was first used in the late 19th century by European explorers and colonizers. They used this term to separate the African continent into two distinct parts. The northern part, which was predominantly Arab and Muslim, was considered more civilized, while the southern part, Sub-Saharan Africa, was deemed primitive and undeveloped. This geographical divide was more than just a matter of latitude and climate. It was a racial line drawn by colonizers, a way to justify their conquest and exploitation. By painting the people of Sub-Saharan Africa as backward and uncivilized, colonizers could argue they were bringing civilization and progress to these regions, masking their true intentions of resource extraction and dominance. Fast forward to modern times and we still see the term Sub-Saharan Africa in use. It's a staple in academia, international organizations and the media. But here's the kicker. It continues to perpetuate the same racial stereotypes that were prevalent during the colonial era. The term implicitly suggests a homogeneity among the diverse countries south of the Sahara, ignoring the rich cultural, historical and political differences among them. It also carries a negative connotation, often being associated with poverty, conflict, and underdevelopment. Moreover, the term Sub-Saharan Africa reinforces the colonial narrative that the Sahara Desert is a hard boundary separating two vastly different Africas, rather than viewing it as a region where cultures, ideas, and people have been interacting and influencing each other for millennia. So, as we can see, Sub-Saharan Africa is not just a neutral geographical term, but a loaded one, carrying historical weight. It's a term that subtly perpetuates racial stereotypes and colonial narratives, even in the 21st century. But as we'll explore in the next scenes, there are alternatives to this terminology that respect the diversity and complexity of the African continent. Now let's delve deeper into how the term Sub-Saharan Africa reinforces racial stereotypes. The term Sub-Saharan Africa has been widely used to create a binary division between North Africa and the rest of the continent. This division, however, is not just geographical, but also carries racial undertones. The Sahara Desert is seen as a dividing line between the Arab-dominated North and the Black African South. This distinction is not only misleading but harmful, as it implies a hierarchy where North Africa is often associated with the Middle East, and consequently, seen as more developed, while the rest of Africa is perceived as underdeveloped, or less civilized. This stereotype is further perpetuated by the media, popular culture, and even academic discourse. The term Sub-Saharan Africa is often used synonymously with poverty, conflict and underdevelopment. It's as if the term itself has become a shorthand for these negative connotations, which can have a profound impact on how people perceive and interact with the continent. These stereotypes are not just harmful to the countries and people they misrepresent, but they also influence international relations and policies. For example, foreign aid, trade agreements and diplomatic relations are often shaped by these stereotypical perceptions. This can lead to discriminatory practices, unfair treatment and missed opportunities. Moreover, these stereotypes can also affect the self-perception of Africans themselves. When a narrative is continually reinforced that you come from a region that is synonymous with problems and underdevelopment, it can negatively impact one's self-esteem and aspirations. The term Sub-Saharan Africa therefore plays a significant role in shaping perceptions and reinforcing stereotypes. It's not just a benign geographical term, but a loaded phrase that carries with it a history of racial bias and discrimination. By using it, we inadvertently perpetuate harmful stereotypes and contribute to the misrepresentation of a diverse and vibrant continent. The term Sub-Saharan Africa therefore plays a significant role in shaping perceptions and reinforcing stereotypes. But what does this mean for the people of Africa? How does this term impact them? Imagine being labeled by a term that, while geographically correct, carries a weight of stereotyping and negative connotations. 
This is the reality for many Africans when confronted with the term Sub-Saharan Africa. This isn't just a matter of semantics but a question of identity, self-perception, and societal attitudes. Let's consider the psychological impacts, which are as profound as they are wide-ranging. The term Sub-Saharan Africa subtly reinforces a narrative of inferiority, of being less than. This can lead to identity issues among Africans as they grapple with a term that suggests they are somehow separate or different from the rest of the continent. It's a divisive terminology that can create internal struggles with self-worth and belonging. Moreover, this term perpetuates an image of Africa that is often one-dimensional and lacking nuance. It feeds into existing stereotypes, suggesting that the entire region is homogenous and ignoring the rich diversity of cultures, languages and histories that exist within it. This only serves to bolster the negative narratives about the continent, fostering misconceptions and biases in both Africans and non-Africans alike. The social impacts are equally significant. The term Sub-Saharan Africa can influence how Africans are perceived by the rest of the world, potentially limiting opportunities for trade, tourism and international relations. It's a label that can color interactions, affecting how Africans are treated and viewed in global forums. In essence, the term Sub-Saharan Africa does more than just designate a geographical location. It's a loaded term that carries with it a legacy of discrimination, stereotype and inequality. It shapes the way Africans see themselves, and the way the world sees Africa. The term Sub-Saharan Africa thus has tangible impacts on Africans, contributing to negative self-perceptions and societal attitudes. The next time you use it, consider the implications. Remember, words matter and they can have a powerful impact on people's lives. So, if Sub-Saharan Africa is problematic, what are the alternatives? That's the question we're tackling now. One approach is to refer to the specific regions or countries. Africa is a vast continent with 54 countries, each with its unique history, culture and socio-economic dynamics. Therefore, it's more appropriate and respectful to refer to these nations by their names, like Nigeria, South Africa, or Kenya, rather than bunching them together under a broad, stereotypical term. Another alternative is to use geographical terms that are less loaded with historical baggage. For instance, we could talk about West Africa, East Africa, Central Africa, Southern Africa, or the Horn of Africa. These terms are geographically accurate and do not carry the same connotations as Sub-Saharan Africa. We could also consider using terms that reflect economic or political alliances, for example, we could refer to nations in the African Union, or, Economic Community of West African States. These terms highlight the cooperative efforts of African nations towards common goals. However, it's important to remember that any term we use should respect the diversity and complexity of the continent. Africa is not a monolith. It's a vibrant mosaic of cultures, languages, and peoples. It's a continent of innovation and resilience, of ancient traditions and forward-thinking dynamism. We must strive to use language that reflects this reality. We should avoid reducing Africa to stereotypes or simplistic narratives. Instead, we should aim to highlight its richness, its diversity, and its potential. Remember, language is powerful. It shapes our perceptions and our understanding of the world. Therefore, the words we choose to describe Africa matter. They can either perpetuate harmful stereotypes, or they can foster understanding and respect. So let's be mindful of our language, Let's strive to use terms that honor the complexity and diversity of Africa, that acknowledge its challenges, but also celebrate its achievements and its potential. It's time to rethink how we refer to Africa, moving away from broad stereotypical terms towards more nuanced and respectful language. So we've seen that the term Sub-Saharan Africa is more than just a geographical designation. It's a term steeped in history, imbued with implications that reach far beyond the simple lines of latitude and longitude. Looking back, we've explored the historical context of the term, seeing how it has roots in imperialistic and colonial narratives. The term has been used to separate, to create a dichotomy between North and South, perpetuating racial stereotypes and biases that are deeply ingrained in our collective consciousness. We've delved into how these stereotypes have affected Africans, how this divisive nomenclature has impacted their identities, their self-perception, and how they are perceived by the rest of the world. The term Sub-Saharan Africa has been used as a blanket statement that homogenizes and oversimplifies the rich, diverse cultures, languages, histories and experiences of the people living in these regions. We've also discussed the need for alternatives, for new ways of talking about this vast and varied part of the world 
that do not hinge on outdated and harmful frameworks. We've seen that there is a growing movement to replace Sub-Saharan Africa with more representative and respectful terms. Remember language is powerful, and the way we talk about places and people matters. Let's be conscious of the terms we use and the implications they carry. If you've enjoyed this deep dive into the terminology and its implications, show your support by giving this video a like. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell to stay updated with our latest videos. Your engagement helps us to keep researching, exploring, and discourse on such important topics. Thank you for your support.